Hello, everybody, and welcome to Prevail Marketing's daily YouTube channel, where we talk, give you tips, tricks, strategy, techniques, ideas, concepts to help you grow your business through sales and marketing. My name is Bill Arnold. I'm your host. And today we're going to do things a little differently. Uh, usually video is a wonderful platform in order to communicate information. We love it. We do this every day. But sometimes the length of time you have in a video is just not sufficient enough to get a concept or idea across. And that's where we're at today. And the reason that for that is we basically wrote an ebook called Level Up Your Marketing, The Power of Gamification. That ebook's about 22 pages long, and there's no way I can go in about 10 minutes, give you every concept, every idea, every thought that's in that ebook. So rather than try to do that, I'm going to do a couple things differently. I'm going to give you some ways it works, ideas, examples, of real life examples that I've lived through, we've done to show you the power of gamification. I'm going to turn around and give you a link to the ebook, and I'm going to give you what chapters you're going to find when you download that ebook. Hopefully, when you hear about how powerful gamification can be used to get brand advocates to do things on your behalf, you're going to immediately decide that you want to download this ebook and consider this for your business. So let's begin. Let's talk about what gamification is first off. Gamification is basically incentivizing your customers, brand advocates, to take actions that you otherwise they otherwise should take, but you reward them with prizes, you make a game of it, you make it fun. Just think about how many people use gaming right now, be it Call of Duty, be it Mario, Zelda, I'm dating myself probably. All these are, they love playing games. Imagine taking that game concept, putting it in your business to help you grow your business. That's the power of gamification. And let's see how it works. <clears throat> well, from a B2C standpoint, it's a really good example. It's really easy to understand. Think of McDonald's. Think of their Monopoly game. They've ran for many, many years. Now, I know they had some problems a few years back where there were some legal issues. I understand they're still back doing it again. But the concept really worked. People would go to McDonald's just because of that game. Just because they got those little cards that they could rip off and match up against a against game board and say, I won. Maybe a sandwich. Okay, it may be something bigger. Very few people won the big prize, but people won a lot of Cokes and sandwiches and ice cream cones. If the machines were working, I get you. But they basically would go there instead of Burger King or in or out Burger because of that game. That game, it wasn't the food they were going for. It was the possibility of winning something, and it didn't have to be something big. It could be something as simple and basic as a sandwich. Think how much additional business McDonald's got because of that. That's easy from a B2C standpoint, but let's talk about a B2B standpoint. Maybe harder to grasp how you can do that. I'll give you an example. I had a client who had a uh, reseller program. And with this reseller program, the resellers basically had many, many different options, not just my clients, what they could sell. They weren't exclusive. They could sell a lot of different, a lot of different variations of what my client did. And we did everything the right way. We basically did campaigns in the box. So the clients always had something they could sell it every single month with their brand to market it. We, you know, we gave them promotions of things that they could do, but there wasn't the type of engagement you'd hope for. So I suggested let's gamify it. Let's make fun of it. Let's, let's have them compete against each other to see who's the best reseller. Well, my client was a little dubious. Oh, really? We're going we're gonna to make them mad. No, I don't. They're going to have fun. And that's exactly what happened. They had fun. They had a friendly competition amongst each other. And we would give them points for things like running the campaign they should have run anyhow. If they signed somebody up, they got a lot of different points for that. All those points could be turned around and for gift cards or uh, swag, all sorts of different things. But what we found was the competition between each of these resellers was amazing. You know, we had a leaderboard and they always wanted to be at top. There were two or three that were always competing for that top. They would get badges. And so it really changed the whole scope of my client's business. Because all of a sudden now, these dormant resellers were actively, week in and week out, pushing to sell my client's product. But that's not even the best story. <clears throat> the best use case I've ever seen for gamification came from the inbound software giant HubSpot. 
this is probably back in about, oh, I don't know, 2015, 2016, 2014, somewhere in that time frame. HubSpot came with the idea of using gamification to get their brand advocates to take action on their behalf. And so what they did is they had a sign-up period and people would justify why they wanted to be part of this HubStars, which is what they called it, program. And HubSpot picked what they considered to be the top 35 or 45 different candidates. And they said, you are first class. Now, they had several different classes before they, they waved the program off, but it worked. And what they did is they first brought us on. They made us feel important. They made us feel special, that we were the elite brand advocates for HubSpot. We were the true believers. Yes, I was part of it. In fact, I had the highest score, I think, of anybody at the end of the contest, at the end of the program. And what they would do is they start us off very basic, saying, okay, you get points just for signing up. If you get points for, for you know, filling out your LinkedIn profile, things you should be doing here. You get points if you, if you, if you write a blog that talks about the benefit of HubSpot on your site. They would do things very basic and give us points. And those points, again, can be returned in for, for gift cards, Starbucks, uh, DYI, you name it. They had like 35 different gift cards you could purchase. It could be turned in for swag, and most people went for that swag, really not. The HubSpot hats, the HubSpot sunglasses, all those different things that just weren't available. People would go for that. And ultimately, you could get enough points. You either got discounts or actually got it was able to go to inbound for the cost of doing the program, for the points you've earned. <clears throat> but what really made it is how HubSpot evolved that program to be such a powerful brand advocate tool. What they do? Well, they basically would use their brand advocates for testimonials, for uh, referrals, and for reference calls. Great. Makes sense. No problem, right? But they figured out another way to actually up the ante a little bit. If they had a client, maybe this person in the C-suite, maybe it was called some CEO. CEO was considering HubSpot versus one of their competitors like Marketo or Salesforce. They would sit there and say, you know, we're... we're we're, we're loved far more, and our people basically feel that we're a better product. And you and don't take our word for it. You should ask the social social community, social media community, which is the best alternative. Is it HubSpot or is it Marketo? Well, what they would say is say, go, go to LinkedIn. We are not going to do it. We want you to go to LinkedIn, CEO. We want you to ask the question, which do you prefer, Marketo? or HubSpot, and why? Well, within about 30 to, within about 20 minutes, that CEO got 30 to 40 responses talking about the virtue of HubSpot, how magnificent HubSpot was, how it was the so much better than Marketo. I mean, it was like that. And Marketo had nothing. Nobody was lined up to say well, how good Marketo was or whatever the competitor they had up against it. Wasn't that Marketo wasn't any good? It is. It's a very great platform. Just that they did not have brand advocates who were incentivized to take action. Because what HubSpot would do, they'd wait to see that come across LinkedIn or whatever social channels being used, and they would send word out to all their brand advocates, all those HubSpot HubStar uh, members. You get whatever number of points if you in the next half hour respond to this request for information. And we did in mass and then it sold them a lot of business. Think about how powerful that would be if you could get your brand advocates to give referrals, to give testimonials, to write a blog, to do whatever you feel is great from your marketing program like that. Yes, you need a good product to start with. Yes, you need some avid uh, users of it, but if you have that, think of the power you're going to get from gamification. Those are just two examples. I got tons of them. So this ebook we're going to do, so we already said out. Then back if you go to prevailmarketing.com, prevail.marketing, go to blogs. You're going to find the blog about level up your marketing, the power of gamification. You'll find that ebook there. And you know we talk about what gamification is. We talk about the elements that comprise a good gamification program because you have to use best practices to get it right. We talk about psychology of gamification, why it works. I'm all about that psychology. We talk about that. We give you the numbers, so you don't have to just believe us about it. Here's the numbers of other third-party experts saying why gamification works. 
We talk about how to use gamification for client retention. We talk about how to use gamification to weaponize your brand advocates. And finally, we talk about, uh, you know, some how to start a gamification program. And finally, some tips, tricks, strategies, techniques that we found work best. So that is the presentation for today. I thank you for your time. I hope you can stop by and pick up the copy of the gamification ebook. And just a little heads up, we've got four other ebooks in the works that are coming out in the next two weeks. Uh, one is 75 pages, so that's why it's taking so long. But they're going to be very worthwhile because there's a lot of great information. If you find this e this presentation worthwhile, if you want to know about Grand Vacation, go to our, get our ebook. Appreciate your comments. Appreciate your likes. Share this. Subscribe. And until tomorrow, have a great day.